This is one for the history books. Our first interview together. Spread your ears and listen. God be with you. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. For England, James? No. For me. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Daily here from Nation Fusion, and today we are joined by Jim Piddock for the next episode of The Codec. How are you doing this morning, Jim? Great, thank you. Pretty good. We also have our two co-hosts, as usual, Yong Ye. What's up, everybody? It's Yong here, and welcome to our interview with Jim Piddock. It's an honor to have you here, Major Zero. He's uh, one of my favorite characters in the Metal Gear series. I mean, I hate the guy, but I love the guy. And uh, it's just, it's awesome to have you here. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. So stay tuned, folks. Thank you. Yep. Also joined by Corrupt Ronin, as usual. Ooh. What's going on, guys? Corrupt Ronin here. I'd like to give a real quick shout out to the Corrupt Assassins. They practically begged me for this one. So there's, there you go, guys. Also, thank you, Jim, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Big fan of your work outside of Metal Gear as well. So it's going to be a lot thank of fun. You. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'd like to start off the show by um, saying, uh, Jim, I know there's some uh, some controversial stuff that we'll talk about later with the Metal Gear <laughs> series. But to, to me and, and uh, hopefully to my fans, you are major zero and will always be rather than uh you know whoever reprises the role later on down the road so thank you for your work uh in that but yong you're just going to start us off today with uh the questioning so yong take it away yeah so uh for our first question uh just i would love it if you could tell us a bit about who you are for those who may not know who jim piddock is so who is jim piddock how did he become an actor and how did he get to where he is today Ha, ha. Um, <laughs> I, I've been doing it a long while. Uh, I started out as an actor in the theatre in England um, in the late 70s. And then I moved to, over to America in early uh, 80s. Um, did a number of shows on Broadway, including Noises wow. Off, which became a kind of big, big hit show. I was in that uh, not too long ago, actually. Um, oh I, my, I, I, I do theatre myself. And uh, who'd you play? I played Tim. I was the original Tim on Broadway. <laughs> Oh wow, that's awesome! Nice. I played uh, Lloyd. It was a college production, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic show. But uh, anyway, please continue. So I did that for um, a year, and I did three other Broadway shows, I think. Um, and then I moved out to California in the mid '80s and started working more in television and film. Uh, I think my first film was Lethal Weapon Two, uh, where I played a South African concert. And then um, I remember that. So started writing uh, at the end of the '80s, and now I spend probably two thirds of my time writing and producing um, hmm. very diverse stuff. I, I've worked a lot with Christopher Guest, uh, who I also appear in those films. Um, he and I are about to do a film, um, and we did a series for HBO a couple of years ago called Family Tree, which we were both in. Um, and what else? Uh, films. There's a film called Tooth Fairy, which I, I kind of wrote uh, the story for. And um, I, I, I don't know. Was That's I the loved... horror film? No, Tooth Fairy was with The Rock. Dwayne. Oh, yes. Rock. Oh, right. Yes. yes. That was such a great movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, seeing you in The Prestige, actually. Yeah. Um, and I, Briefly, I, yeah. I appeared for about two seconds in The Prestige. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good ten seconds. But no, I... I, uh, I remember um like i saw your face i was researching who is jim piddock because i you know mostly know you by your voice but uh with this interview coming up i researched you and i'm like this guy looks very familiar and yeah. then i saw your imdb page and realized you were in that movie and uh that's Austin awesome Powers. prestige it, it, that's one of my favorite movies of all time and uh yes yeah, terrific yeah, yeah. It's absolutely i did great. that movie for one reason um because it was very little to do um I was a lifelong fan of Michael Caine. I mean, I grew up and oh was, yeah, and so to have him call me sir in a movie—that's um, <laughs> the dream. It's just too good to turn down. And yeah. I'm also a big fan of Chris Nolan, so uh, oh, yeah. I did that. I think I worked on that for a day at the most, maybe two days, and got paid absolutely nothing. But um, <laughs> I think I got paid seven hundred and fifty dollars, which is outrageous. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, but. Uh, but but it was worth it. It was fun to do. Wow! Did That's you meet awesome. um, Nolan himself? Do you? I don't know. Meeting. Oh Greer? yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, he was directing the film, so right. I, I would be yeah. hard not to. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well. Well. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Young. That's a, a, a very detailed description, man. You, you, uh, you've definitely done uh, quite a few films that, uh, that most of us are familiar with. But uh, a lot of us here if for this particular show will know you, uh, you know, from your role as uh, Major Zero in uh, Metal Gear. But tell us a little bit about some of the other titles that you were in. You did some work in, uh, in Lord of the Rings. Um, and some other video games. How does some of those games compare to doing work uh, in Metal Gear? Is it less? Is it more? Is it uh, you know more? Is is it more difficult to to do lines for an established um, series like Lord of the Rings as opposed to maybe your own original voice in um, right. Metal Gear? Well, I've done a few things. Uh, you know, voice matches. I, I think I, one of the first jobs I ever did was in The Lion King. I had to match yes. Rowan Atkinson's voice, and I could only do it by sticking a finger on my nose like that. It's going to get the nasal quality. <laughs> um, and I had to do the whole thing with that. Really? Um, yeah. And, and then I got kind of bored I don't, somewhere along the line with doing voice matches. I, I just sort of, it's like a, a science. It's the difference between cooking and baking. One's a science and one's an art, really. Mm. Uh, it, it's, uh, it became dull to me. So i much rather create an original character or, or use my own voice or whatever. So uh, <clears throat> with things like The Lord of the Rings, that was just a, a happy accident because I'd never seen the movies uh, or movie at that time. I think one had come out. And um, uh, I read, read for the copy and they said, oh, you sound exactly like so-and-so Bilbo or Elrond. I can't mm. even remember it was. Both, I think. Yes. And um, I ended up doing the whole thing without ever having heard the original. <laughs> and, uh, oh, wow. I think that must be a first. And then when I heard it, I went, oh, yeah, it does sound pretty similar. <laughs> um, so that was a real weird accident. Um, and then otherwise, I mo mostly just go in with my take on whatever it is and, and try and do that. Do you find That's that awesome. uh, doing Metal Gear work and maybe work for other games, do you find the, uh, the amount of dialogue different? I mean, in, in Metal Gear, you talk a lot through the code yeah. conversations. Um, it, it, was there a difference in recording, like how long you had to stay in the boots and, and things oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. I mean, most, most video games or stuff you do is probably, you know, there for an hour, two hours at the most. Right. I, think, I, I think on Metal Gear it was eight days at least, eight full days. Wow. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's what we're getting across the board. And I heard um, – I, I, we, we talked to David Hayter um, in one of our other interviews, and uh, he was saying for, um, for Metal Gear in particular, uh, a lot of the sound uh, in recording equipment was kind of uh, not necessarily dated, but they had to do like old school type of ways like that to match like waveforms rather than video and things like that. Did you ever run into any of that working in, in the games? I, I'll be honest, I don't remember. I, 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 I tend to let the technical people do the thing and I, and I just kind of focus on what I'm doing. Um, okay. I do remember Laurie being there and I remember working with David. We were okay. doing recordings at the same time. Oh, awesome. Uh, and I think someone else, it, but, but I remember those two particularly because we spent a lot of time doing stuff. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, that I remember primarily, but, but I, to go through the technical stuff, I don't remember. Okay. Well, thank you for answering that. Uh, Rodin, what is your question for, uh, for Jim? Uh, you know, also, I did a bit of research on your IMDb page, and looking at that, I can tell that you've done a pretty extensive, well, perhaps extensive might be uh, the lack of a term for what you've done re or as of uh, your career. But is there any preference that you have going from, you know, movies, TV shows, and video games, like throughout those mediums? Was there one that you preferred doing, or, you know, is there something that, or do you feel the same way about all of them as a whole? <coughs> no, I, I like doing both. Um, I, I, uh, I've been lucky. I think I have something like a hundred credits on IMDb, so I've worked <laughs> kind of a real broad spectrum of things. Um, and sitcoms, you know, from multi-camera sitcoms to kind of independent films to huge, you know, Independence Day and Lethal Weapon 2 were both top grossing yes. movies of the, the oh, year. Yes. Uh, so I've, I've done the whole spectrum. I, I Again, I, I, over time, I've become less fond of doing multi-camera sitcoms in front of an audience. I used to like doing that a lot. Mm. I think when I came from the theater, that was a great kind of bridge to doing television. Right. Now I find it kind of uh, disruptive at almost having an audience there. I like to work more internally than I used to. Okay. And so I don't, that's my least favorite thing to do right now. <laughs> oh, um, okay. but, but film and TV, I mean, I love working with Christopher Guest because in those films and the TV series we did, it's, it's mostly improvised. You know, we, we, Chris and I write very detailed outlines and character biographies 
but the actual dialogue when we come to, to sort of do it, play it in, within the scene, is a lot of it's improvised. Hmm. So that's kind of very, it's like walking a tightrope and it's great yeah. fun working with really talented people. Right. So I love doing that. Um, in terms of what I've done, I, I don't see a lot of things I do now. I, 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 I enjoy the process and I like mm -hmm. doing it. And, and, um, but the two films that people say, well, what would you recommend of yours to see? I would say Best in Show is still a terrific movie. Yes. Um, Best in Show, I think, holds up and that's uh, 15 years old. It's a great yeah. movie. And, um, and the film Chris and I are writing now is a similar type of film, so I, I've got high hopes for that. And then the other film is a small independent film I did called See This Movie, which uh, was with uh, Seth Meyers and John Cho and Jessalyn Gilsig and Jessica Paré from um, Mad Men. And, and it's yeah. terrific. The five of us were the main characters, and it's a really fun independent film that sort of was great on the, uh, on the uh, festival circuit. Wow. So those are the two I'd recommend. And other than that, you know, I mean, I've been in Friends, I've been in Mad About You, I've been in yes. here, all yeah. the big right. shows, and, sure. and people have discovered them, so I, I don't need to, to sell them. Yeah, I, I got to say, that's, uh, all right. that's a great question, Ronan, because we know that uh, that Jim here is, uh, like you said, he's been in a, a ton of stuff. I think you're probably um, one of the first people we've interviewed that's been in so many different types of mediums. Exactly. Um, yeah. we, we've interviewed people that have been in tons of games, like Troy that's Baker right. and, and Tasia Valenza, but you've got movies, shows, theater, games, Broadway, theater. The whole night. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's incredible. So this interview might be longer than 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yong, your next question for Jim. Yeah, so for my next question, uh, I would like to know what's the story behind how you got the role of Major Zero, and did you want to know anything about the Metal Gear series prior to uh, playing the role? Nothing at all, and I know nothing about it having done the series. <laughs> I've, never seen, I've never seen it, I've never played it. Hmm. Um, I've heard it's great. Um, yeah. uh, I, I didn't, I literally, my, my memory is I would have got some copy from my agents, uh, I'd have in a booth, I'd have read a couple of lines or whatever, and I got hired. So I don't really remember much else about it. I don't think it was just, oh, yeah, hire him without hearing him. Um, <laughs> right. I don't remember, to be honest. It's whatever it is, 10 years ago now, at right. least. Um, yeah. So I don't remember the process of getting it. Uh, I, I read a lot of those copies, and I either get the job or I don't. Sure. And some people, they just ask for me because they know my voice or know who I am. Um, with that one, I don't remember it uh, terribly clearly. The, the kind sure. of how I got. Do you remember um, at least uh, what got you into the audition itself? Like, what made you say, "Sure, I'll I'll go for this um, for this role"? Uh, I don't. I mean, if if somebody, you know, if my voiceover agent says, "I've got some copy for you to read," unless it's something that I really don't want to do, I'll say, "Sure, I'll, you know, <laughs> take a look and I'll read it." It's a, it's kind of a bit of a sideline for me because I'm more of an on-camera actor. Sure. Sure. Uh, and so a writer, as I said, and so it's you know it's uh, same with David Hayter. I mean, he, his m career is mostly as a writer. Uh, yeah. I mean, he right. does voiceover work, but his uh, his really big gig is the writing. Yep. Sure. So so it was actually weird that the two of us, when we were working together, it was pretty unusual that you had two <laughs> two people writing kind of major movies who were actually doing voiceover. Right, right. right. So it was like yeah. a, it was playtime for us. It was playtime. Exactly. Time. <laughs> yeah. D David um, is kind of the exception for the for Metal Gear. He really, uh, when we talked to him, he said he really fell in love with his character and um, yeah. and stuff like that. But we we've also talked to people, you know, just like you, who you know go in do the role and don't necessarily um, you know understand like how big the the fan reaction is. You have tons of fans just from that particular game. So I think uh, I think that's. Um, it's like insightful to, you know, you go in there and you, to, you know, it's just a job for you. Similar as this is just a job for us. Uh, and you know, it turns out to be much bigger than, you know, you ex you well, expect. I had no idea, you know, and even uh, really right. not so recently because someone was talking about those autograph shows that happen in conventions. Mm -hmm. right. And I said, well, I never get, you know, asked to those because I've not been in, uh, you know, Star Trek or any of the kind of big thing yeah. game of Thrones, any of those big things. Most of my stuff has been either one-offs in big movies or or in more kind of culty stuff. Right. So but then someone said, "Well, Metal Gear Solid is massive, you know." Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Sure. So I I I I've either missed the boat on that or um or I need to find that boat. Uh, yeah. It'd be kind of fun. <laughs> we would be fun to see the people and get to know what that world's about. Yeah. We would Absolutely. love for you to do that. Uh, we we actually um. 
uh, not to, to ramble on, but we just had, uh, when we interviewed Tasia Valenza, uh, she did the same thing. She had uh, a way less lines than you in one of the first games that came out, and the people fell in love with her character, and she had no idea until, until literally... Until Twitter, said, basically. Yeah, until she got wow. on Twitter, which was only like two years ago, and the game you know, came out in like, what, 2001, I think? Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The original Metal Gear. And uh, so she's dove back into it, watched some of her scenes on like YouTube and stuff like that, and is actually you know reaching out and you know doing things like you were talking about doing, like going to fan conventions and stuff um, for that particular character. Um, mm. I, I would I would love to to see your reaction to some of your scenes on there because I think um, I think with Metal Gear in particular, a lot of the things that you say in the booth get twisted around in the game because you're actually a bad guy you know what i mean in, in a sense um mm -hmm. you're a bad guy depending on which which uh, end of the spectrum you're on so that's very insightful uh, great question young um my next question for you jim is are there any projects that you're currently working on that you can tell us about both off game and in game related do you have any upcoming video games or movies or tv show work that we should be checking out i don't know if i have any video games no i mean i think the last voiceover thing i did was for uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was a TV series. Right. Um, that was the last thing I did. Uh, in terms of film, I've got a film coming out that I'm in called Kill Your Friends, which is with Nicholas Holt and James Corden. Great it's, title, by the way. I know. It's a very, very dark comedy based on a book by John Niven. That comes out in England on November the 6th, and I believe it opens here in January or February. It's a very, very dark, nasty uh, comedy. Oh, that's my Fantastic. phone. Fantastic. And of course, I don't have it in me, so I can't turn it off. <laughs> it's um, <all> fine. <laughs> brilliant. There's, there's preparation for you. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we can the have phone is going. somewhere else in the house. We're a live uh, show, Jim. It's perfectly fine. It's the background music. It's fine. Yeah. It's yeah. great. So, so uh, yeah, so kill your friends, and uh, it's great. I play a, a, a screaming, screaming, vicious, sadomasochistic homosexual uh, oh. record producer, record producer. Uh, <laughs> Executive. Wow. Um, great combo. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, James Corden's great, and, uh, and Nicholas Holt is fantastic. It's a, it's a really very dark, very nasty, nasty film. Um, if you like nasty comedy, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. um, so that we'll do. soon. And then, as I say, Christopher Guest and I are working on a film. Can't talk too much about that because it hasn't been announced yet. Okay. And the people that are making it uh, are very big on making the announcement, so I can't steal their thunder. <laughs> then I'm also uh, developing a series with Mark Gordon, uh, who's a major television producer, um, which I've created and uh, we just got a fairly big star attached. So that will probably happen in the next year. Um, that will be a, an hour TV show. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm excited to see some of the work you have coming up. I'm curious if I owe Apple money now, though, for the um, the ringtone. So, <laughs> is, that, is that specifically? I have, I have no idea. I'm kidding. Maybe it is. It might. It might be. <laughs> it, it's only recently started doing that on my my uh, <laughs> main computer, and it's really annoying if I'm writing and that happens. But I, 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 I'm figure just, out I, I was kidding, by the way. It's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ronan, your next question for Jim. All right, so as we learn in Metal Gear Solid 3, Major Zero is a huge movie buff, especially James Bond. So can you say the same about yourself? Any favorite movies that you have? Yeah, I, I like movies. Uh, I probably don't go out to the movies very much anymore because I spend from November to February watching all the DVD screeners to vote, you know, for the Academy and stuff. So I kind of see about 40 or 50 films in that space of time. And then the rest of the year, I'm just movied out. So I tend to then catch up on TV shows that I'm behind on. Um, yeah, I love movies. Um, I, I don't... And the other thing is about going to movies in the theater now is that they're really all franchise movies and they're sequels. And there's not too many movies that I want to watch hmm. now in theaters. I mean, the sort of things I like to see are usually released now on HBO or Netflix mm -hmm. sure. um, and tend to be on those platforms. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, the, the, the movies that are in the, the multiplexes are not geared to people my age. You know, they're really... <laughs> I mean, and it's so no, sad. It's, true. It's, it's sad, but it's true. And it's so true. I'm, I'm not going to go watch Terminator. And um, <laughs> I'm, I, I watch. Don't, don't, don't watch one. it. I can't get emotionally invested in robots beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. I guess yeah, it's, it's that. Age. But that's. I'm old. Yeah. It's that era. But um, 
Uh, so you're not a big uh, Avengers Marvel <laughs> guy or Batman? or Actually, that's not true because I did enjoy, I think, the first X-Men. Um, nice. Which David was the David one with uh, Ian McKellen and Patrick uh, Stewart, mm-hmm. which was that? That was the Avengers or X-Men? Oh, that's X-Men, X-Men yeah. X-Men, yeah. 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 I, I really like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Really well done, uh, and I enjoyed Iron Iron was it Iron Giant or the, the one with Robert Downey that first Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. See, I don't even know. Iron, Iron Giant is a great movie, by the way. Everybody should definitely watch that one. So that's a that's a great film. I love Iron Giant. But yeah, it's but, Iron Man. Uh, I got a kind of a, a, a sub question to Ronan's question before we move on to Yong, because sure. Yong's got quite a big one here. Um, but uh, my question is. Uh, you know, we we spoke about um, you know doing the the major zero role and how major zero is a big movie buff. Did you ever find it um, you know offensive the way that they kind of stereotype British people in the Metal Gear game for for <laughs> zero? They talked about I had a scene where they talked about like tea and and how to make tea, and then they had the yeah. one where <laughs> zero is a big James Bond fan. I thought it was funny. I mean, obviously, I don't mean offended in like a bad way, but did you ever find it kind of stereotypical how they kind of shoved all of that stuff into uh, his lap? Well, I've lived in America for thirty four years, and if I was offended by stereotyping of British people, <laughs> I, I'd have been long gone. <laughs> um, no, I don't. You know, I, I, I try and find humor in anything, and, and I try not to be offended by anything. Um, yeah. And I hope people aren't offended by anything I say because I, I'm no. an equal. I'm an equal opportunity offender myself. So, yeah, stereotyping. I mean, if it's if I'm bored by a stereotyping, I'm not going to do it, you know, or I'll yeah. say, look, let's, let's change this up a bit. So but, none of uh, those problems there when, when doing Metal Gear? No, I don't remember that at all. I don't remember feeling that, you know, I mean, I was drunk the whole time, so how do I remember? <laughs> <laughs> no. That explains uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, like Richard Burton doing Blue Beard. I don't remember making it. I was drunk the whole time. <laughs> uh, no, I, I wasn't drunk, uh, but I, I don't. It was, as you say, fifteen years ago. Whatever, right. So right. I, uh, I certainly don't remember being. Uh, it takes a lot to offend me. That's great. <laughs> would would right. you say it's something that you have to get used to in this kind of industry, especially when voice work? Oh movies? yeah, absolutely. You know, I yeah. mean, if I if I said no, I'm not playing another butler or another snotty <laughs> boss, I would never work. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I believe you were Alfred in uh, Batman Red Red Hood. As Under well, the red I was, hood, yeah. it's like it, I played Alfred a few times, and I played I was a um, played Kevin Hart's butler in the movie Think Like a Man too. So yeah. um, if you've not seen that, uh, the scenes with with uh, the him and me are actually quite funny because the, the energy difference is so dramatic. Yeah. It was like, so dry and so still, and Kevin is so manic and so energy filled yeah. that this is kind of a, it's a good combo. I feel like you would make a good Alfred on film, on TV, yes, or any yes, of the sort. Yes. on camera. I think you make a great Alfred. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, let, let's start pushing that. Let's yeah. start. But that's, that. that's something yeah. we seem to do here all the time, Jim. Is we 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 tend to interview a voice actor and then tell them where we would like to see them, and then we're going to go out and try and get you that role. So great. You you want <laughs> you want to be my managers, please. Right? Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Guys. I think so as well. Maybe uh, Dark Knight Four that ever comes out, right? Yeah, Look, ten percent. Well, three and a half, three and a half, yeah, three right. and a half. <laughs> yeah, three and a half. There we go. Okay. All right. The pre-sequel. The pre-sequel. Um, Yong, your next question. All right. So you you said already that you're not heavily invested in, uh, in the story. So this may be a question that, you know, could have a very simple answer to. But uh, here we go. Uh, here I go. In your experience, was Zero a character that was... Um, well, actually, that's the wrong question. Oh, there we go. It, yeah. Was Zero a, a character that was... Uh, specifically defined uh, and someone who you were asked to voice in a very specific way or was he someone you had a lot of leeway and influence in terms of affecting uh, the outcome of the character? Uh, Do you remember at all? Yeah, I I don't think there was any, nobody sort of said, no, you need to make him more this. It was very self-evident from the beginning that he was quite um, in control, um, very measured. There's not a lot of emotion in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was, you know, it's it's mostly, to my memory, instructing um, Snake or whoever, or, you know. Sure. It's it's the kind of in control commander or major or whatever you want to right. call. It. Right. So you can't. There's no room for hysterics or um, 
major major emotion is major sure. zero is it's zero emotion you know sure um and in terms of the the humor in there did you have any influence in that at all or was that something that was just written for you and you just said the lines the way you were instructed to i will usually infuse what I, what i do uh, even if i'm playing a serial killer with humor <laughs> and uh it that is just part of who i am and, sure. and uh whether it's people get it or not it's another matter but it's usually very dry yeah. and it's mm -hmm. usually I find it amusing to me, and if anyone else oh, does, no, great. We, we found it yeah. very amusing. Oh, we like it. It's yeah. kind of amusing. All right. <laughs> awesome. Um, and for uh, my second part to that question, uh, what are some things that you uh, were told to keep in mind or that you have to keep in mind maybe to uh, play the, the character of Zero? I mean, I know you said, uh, you know, he's just very straightforward, uh, <laughs> major. Uh, are there a few things maybe that you had to keep in mind? Because... Uh, it seems to me personally that maybe uh, Zero's voice was a, a register higher than uh, your nor normal speaking voice. That's just from what I'm hearing. I don't know right. if there was anything in particular that you keep in no, mind. No, I'm 15 years older. As you get older, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I don't yeah. think I don't think there was any uh, conscious effort to change my regular voice. Okay, uh, it was modulated fairly evenly, but I don't remember if it sounds deeper now. I'm just you know 15 years older. I think um, I think. There's um, a difference of like, uh, I don't know how British people do it. I'm trying not to offend you. But there's like different types <laughs> of British people. Like the Br British people from the south of Britain talk a certain way. And I think Zero had that kind of like upper class British tone yeah. to him. So I, w was, uh, was that a, uh, a thing that you had to keep in mind? Like when you went in to play him, were you uh, keeping a specific kind of British person in mind? Or were you just going in there with your own original accent? Yeah, it's close to my original voice anyway, but it's, it, but it was almost it there. And some like we can hear it in your speech a lot sometimes. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, I think he was old school uh, officer material. You know, that, that's how officers would normally speak. You know, um, nowadays it's a little loosened up a little, so it would probably be a bit more. Um, so did that influence you? Like when you were doing, did you like draw from old school British officers? Maybe from like different movies and stuff that you had seen back then about British officers. Uh, yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah, I mean, I felt like that was that was what that character should be. He should be of a certain class and a certain well-spoken. Um, it felt that's right to me. It felt right. You know, I, you, I could have done it, you know, as a more Cockney, Southern kind of uh, estuary <laughs> yeah. accent, which which I'll use for other characters. But this didn't feel like that was right. Okay, yeah. cool. Great question. I, I love Absolutely. that. I, that's something I notice as well is like the different kinds of like uh, accents and dialogue that go into. I mean, it's like that with any country. Like in uh, in, in America, you have those you know southern accent, and yeah. you know, the, <laughs> the Brooklyn accent, or whatever. Y'all, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all. Uh, Ronan, what's your next question for Jim? All right, so I know you went a bit uh, went over a bit about your experience getting into theater work and acting in general, like in TV and movies and such. But would you consider your work on Metal Gear Solid 3 a large step for you going from movies and TV to an interactive medium and a big budget title uh, like Metal Gear Solid? I've got to be perfectly honest with you. It was just another job. Really? Yeah. It was, it was no different to me than doing any of the voiceover stuff I'd done. I had no idea it was big or going to be big. Mm -hmm. um, since then, I've obviously realized, you know, they, I think they used what I recorded for three or four different spin-off type games and... Yeah, um, but uh, no, I had no idea. So uh, it, uh, time-wise, I knew it was more of a time commitment for me to do. Uh, but but I don't. It really wasn't anything I was aware that this was a big deal. No. Sure. I've got a question now that you said that because yeah. I'm a little confused, and I think I think you're on the same page as me, Ronan. Um, yeah. Did you only record for one game? Well, I recorded. Uh, no, I think I did go back to do extra lines, yeah, but they well, spliced off. I know that they spliced off my original eight days worth of recording, I think it was eight days, and used it in different games or different platforms. Right, or right. So and when then, you came back, it was just additional lines? It wasn't an entire yeah. new game? No, I wow. think I, may, maybe it was an entire new, but I, I, mm -hmm. it was not nearly as much of a body of work. Right. I just mm -hmm. had to supplement what they already had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I believe you returned for Portable Ops. It yes. was... Um, because you did Ops. Snake Eater, and then there was another smaller game they did called Portable Ops, and I mm -hmm. I heard your voice there. Uh, so yeah. I I don't know what the I don't know if you recorded the lines for that or if they actually spliced up the stuff. That's from, crazy. 
I think I did go back a few years later and do more stuff. Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. But like you said, definitely not as much as before. Right. No, the first one was that was the the marathon. Yeah, and there was okay. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Lots. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of hidden dialogue in that game that you have to have. Absolutely. It's contextual, sensitive, and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah I wouldn't Thank be surprised. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, good insight. Uh, Yong, your next question? Yep. So this was the one that, the one that I was going to ask where I, I'm probably going to get a very simple answer. So it's very <laughs> lore heavy, and you can just say, I don't know. Uh, I might be speaking Greek. Uh, but uh, So here we go. Uh, in Metal Gear Solid 3, Major Zero was very behind the scenes. Um, you know, he was more of a support guy, he wasn't really um, as big of a presence. But then in later entries, it is revealed that Major Zero is actually the man who founded the elusive organization known as the Patriots, and this is basically the main antagonistic force of the series. So, after finishing your work in Snake Eater, uh, were you ever given any hint that Zero would become this enigmatic villain, this uh, the most important and antagonistic part in the whole Metal Gear series did you know at all uh in your work that you did um this is the first i've heard of it so yeah <laughs> I, <laughs> really know. I had no idea I mean, when you mentioned he turns out to be something of a bad guy or now you're elaborating on that that's the first i knew of it wow really yeah, yeah. just wow. today but yeah just literally you saying oh, that wow wow crazy well there we go uh well <laughs> he is <laughs> How ignorant am I? I'm, I'm, I'm the worst. <laughs> I, I, no, no, no. I mean, no, no, this no. was something that was revealed in like like two games after uh, yeah. the one that wow. you did. Yeah, they didn't. We didn't know either until two games later. So right. you know, it's totally understandable that you wouldn't know. Um, but yeah, he ended up being the main antagonist, uh, and it's crazy how that turned out. Uh, nobody expected it. He seemed right. like such a nice guy in Snake Eater, and then we find out he's been controlling the world, puppeteering everyone right. behind the scenes and stuff like that. It's crazy. Uh, right. Wow, well, I'm going to have to watch some of these uh, clips. <laughs> right. I would definitely recommend it, I mean, especially for you as a writer. I think you would definitely appreciate the um, uh, the kind of story that your character has. And I think, uh, like Yong said, it's mm -hmm. in, in the Metal Gear series. I know you've done some other Metal Gear interviews. In the Metal Gear series, you're the villain that everybody loves to hate. Like a lot of people understand uh, the the uh, the lore behind Zero, and they understand why he's doing what he does. Um, but the the performance that you gave gives us that background to like the character as well from uh, from Snake Eater and and Port Portable Ops. Uh, gives the character really likability, and then so when he turns bad, you're like, oh, I don't. You're right. He's not a stereotypical guy. villain because of right. Snake Eater. Right. Um, he right. he has a past. He was this guy at one point, and then he turned into that guy. And it has a lot to do with uh, yeah. Lori Allen and David Hayter as well. So um, I, I would definitely I would definitely recommend if you have some free time. Uh, yeah, there's there's. Uh, uh, there are videos on YouTube where it's just the story, so you don't have to watch all of the gameplay in between. So you yeah. could can definitely check yeah. out uh, check out all all the scenes that you're in. But that's crazy that you didn't know until today. And by the yeah, way, email, yeah. you, you, if you can email me the links, I'll watch them. I, I mean, I, I'll yeah. uh, sure. save me the time. Sounds good. Course. Sounds good. Uh, and by the way, there weren't any there wasn't any voice acting for Zero in the later games. He was too old at that yeah. point. I think he was in. Yeah. Uh, uh, like a vegetable hundreds. state or something at <laughs> yeah. that point, yeah. um, but he he made like artificial intelligence to do the stuff that he wanted to do, and it, it got really crazy. But um, yeah, so. yeah. So I was really disappointed that they didn't bring you back for some of the other games. But we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, Ronan, your next question. All right. So basically, we've already covered the whole thing that I was going to ask about. You know, keeping up with the story of Metal Gear, uh, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Three, and uh, yeah. the future games. So my next question that I'll move over to is, you know. Uh, Kojima was particularly well known for, you know, talking about every Metal Gear entry as if, his, if it were his last in the series. Uh, were you or anyone else, you know, informed of this when you were doing the voice, the voice work for it? Were you supposed to treat it as if it were, was his last? Was there any pressure behind that at all when you were working on it? No, 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 I don't, I don't remember that at all. No. Okay, oh, that's, that's totally fine. Yep. Uh, Y'all? Yep. Uh, so this is the big one that I wanted to ask. Uh, <laughs> I think everybody I think, wants to ask this. Yeah, um, as we all know, uh, you you tweeted about something that happened between uh, you and Konami. Uh, so I think people got wind of the fact that you were asked to reprise your role as Zero for uh, the latest entry, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. But things didn't seem to work out. So can you tell us the story behind 
uh, what happened there, because we would have loved to uh, see you reprise your role as Zero, yep. and it seems as though maybe Konami's <coughs> offer wasn't uh, to your satisfaction. So what, what can you tell us about that whole spiel? Yeah, I mean, I talked about this recently in an interview. Um, the, 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 uh, the world of video games is really not caught up with you know, what, it, what it's worth mm -hmm. for actors, yeah. and, and, and they get paid very little. And that's fine when it's a new medium. Everyone ex sort of understands that. Um, when I heard how much the, the Metal Gear games made that I'd done, oh. I was kind of horrified that we, how little we'd been paid in the sense that if that had been a movie, um, I'd ha own my own island by now. Um, <laughs> so, but that's okay, because that, I, I went in not knowing, and that's fine. Uh, that, right. You do that, and it, it's it, good luck to them. But then when you come back, I mean, where actors you know, make money is if you have a successful movie and it becomes a sequel. So when they asked to spin off things, and they were able to do it, paying almost nothing to just use the original lines, I was like, okay, contractually, that's fine. And then uh, I did, I think, some more recordings of a set of for my memory a couple of years later or three years later, whatever. And I did them for not very much. And I was starting to go, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. So mm -hmm. when they asked me last year or whatever it was mm -hmm. about the new one, and um, they offered a ridiculously low amount. Um, I just said no. My, I said to my agent, I don't, first of all, I don't need to do it, and I, um, I don't want to do it for that money. So sure. no, no, it's a pass for me. So, and then they came back with um, a minuscule amount more, um, and, and I countered with a very low offer that just because I thought, well, okay, everyone else is doing it. I'm not going to be the bad guy. And, and they just wouldn't come up to something that was even what I considered ridiculously low myself, but I was right. willing to do it for. So then I just said, absolutely not. And it sort of pissed me off, to be honest, because yeah. um, I, had, I had no dealings with Konami because it was my agent. Right. Uh, and I said, I don't, I don't, why would I do that? You know, I would only resent it. I would go in there. So I, I'm, rather than be taken advantage of, I'm just going to not do it. Right. And, yeah. and we can respect I, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's, and I, <clears throat> trust me, I, I, it, I'm not I'm not exactly greedy, and I've never been one to just go for the money. Sure, yeah. yeah. But there but comes you, a point yeah. where you go. You got to be. You got to take a slice of that pie, or else it's not worth it. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's a job. It's it's your livelihood. So of course, it's my career. I'm, I'm definitely a hundred percent on board with you, Jim. I feel like um, in the medium of games. The voice actors are the ones that bring the game to life. The games, exactly. um, like the the all the games up till now. Speaking in Metal Gear, like if it wasn't David Hayter doing the Snake voice, it would definitely not be as impactful as uh, you know somebody else doing. I mean, there, there's yeah. they've actually um, released David um, as well. I don't know if you if you know about that, but David's no longer. Yeah, he's no longer Snake. They've they've got Kiefer Sutherland uh, in there, and um, really the only returning character is uh, is Christopher Randolph, who's just been he's been with the series pretty much its entire lifespan. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> I I don't think they give the voice actors the credit that they really deserve or the or the financial benefits that they really deserve because if this was a movie, they like you said you you'd be paid very very well to do these specific roles, and I know. Um, especially in this game, um, the technology is advanced where if you would have went in and done it, they probably would have asked you to put um, these dots on your face and they would have motion captured your face for the performance as well. So it's getting up there to where you're basically being acting in a movie. Right. You know, yeah, you're both basically body there. and voice and yep. face and everything. So. Yeah. And so I think a lot of fans are not only uh, behind you on that, but they're also very disappointed with uh, with Konami's um, kind of way that they're handling the the cast, um, at least yeah. for the English side of the game. And I know, um, you know, I don't want to drag it on too long, but uh, I'm I'm the kind of guy on on our show, Jim, where I'm going to tell the audience exactly how I feel, and I don't sugarcoat anything. I think it's ridiculous um, how they treat the U.S. staff of the game compared to they've brought pretty much everybody back from the Japanese side. Um, I think that. That's preposterous. I would have loved to see you back. I would have loved to see David back, and it would have been a, a great and amazing game. I'm still, um, you know, on the fence about some of the changes that they've made, but I definitely support your decision to to hold out um, and, and not do it for, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, pennies. Yeah, I mean, you know, I work, I see it from the other side too because I am a producer, so I'm I'm out there making offers to people and stuff, and yeah. uh, I just know. You know, there's there's fair and there's unfair, and yeah. and they're it's making fine. money I, on I the game. I don't so. bad feelings because I would have held bad feelings if I'd done it. But but yeah. but I don't. They they're 
perfectly entitled to, to offer a pittance, and I'm perfectly entitled to say, um, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that seems Fair to be enough. the common thing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, maybe, a maybe they blew the whole budget with Kiefer Sutherland. Who knows what happened? I mean, I, I, who, knows, who cares? I mean, you know, and, and I'm not ego driven either because I right. know there are, I could give you 30 actors that could do what I do as just as interestingly, differently, whatever. I'm not, I'm not kind of saying you, this is not going to be the same without me because it's ridiculous. I know yeah. it would be yeah. fine without me. But I'll tell you if, that it's not. It's oh, I've, we've heard the replacement, and in my opinion, I didn't. I didn't like the replacement guy. Well, yeah, no. I mean, that's <laughs> the fans to decide, not me. But but right. I I think that if you, you know, if I make a movie and I hire a group of people and it's a big hit movie and I'm asked to make a sequel as a producer, I then reward those people because it's a crapshoot. And and being an actor is is you're rolling the dice every time. And if you do get lucky enough to be in a hit series or a hit movie or a hit show, a uh, video game, you should be rewarded when the time comes. Absolutely. And the time comes after that success and the for the next one. And when you're not going to do that, then it's just, who wants to be in business with people like that? Yeah. yeah I don't. That's true. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah, I, now, I've just talked a whole bunch. Uh, uh, Ronan and Yong, did you guys have an opinion that you'd like to talk to Jim about on this? I, I didn't mean to, like I said, rant. I, I, I tend to sometimes. But uh, <laughs> do you guys have uh, an opinion that you'd like to speak to Jim about on, on this particular subject before we move on? I mean, I'm in complete agreement with uh, yeah. the way uh, the company has been treating it. Like with David, um, he wasn't even given like a send off. He was kind of, nobody told him that he will, you know, they, they started working on Metal Gear Solid 5 and nobody told him that you just, you know, anyway, and then yeah. David had to contact them. You know, he heard about, you know, th this game that they're making and he's like, yeah, you know, do, do you need me back for that's, this? That's my game. Thing? You know, it's, <laughs> right. it's the game that I've been doing for 15 years and they're, they're just like, nah, you know, no, we don't no, need it's, it. And that's it. It's been replaced. Yeah. It's silly. The, the, the thing, the one thing that made me laugh when they were, negotiating this or trying to negotiate was the, my agent said well they're justifying the low amount because your character won't be seen in the game an entire amount a lot he'll be heard but not seen right. so i'm going oh but i'm on camera so what is it it's the voice <laughs> right <laughs> It's a ludicrous idea. Yeah, right. wow that's crazy huh. that did, is insane. did they say they won't see you at all or just a little bit you so say you won't actually see the character that much, okay. but you'll hear it. Oh, okay. So it's like saying The Simpsons, you know, you, you shouldn't pay those guys <laughs> any money because you never that's see the real, it's yeah. just their, their cartoons. It's insane. Yeah. That's a good yeah, that insight, though, for us for, as, as fans, because the game is, has not been released yet, so it's cool to hear kind of what the character is, uh, um, you know, kind of planned for. But I think that's crazy. Uh, like you said, yeah. it, you're, you're, it's a digital game, so <laughs> it, doesn't yeah. make, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but they, they, they released a similar uh, statement about releasing David Hayter, and I, I would love to get your opinion on it. Um, they said, keep in mind, David Hayter is in his late 40s um, uh, as well, and he's an actor and a writer. So their, their um, spiel behind releasing um, David Hayter was, they were looking for somebody who could play a more subdued role through facial actions of a man in his late 40s. Uh, so that's why they got Kiefer Sutherland instead of David Hayter. Brilliant. So, I don't, I don't know. David H. <laughs> <Just is>, ludicrous, <laughs> ludicrous. I mean, it's like if you believe that, you'll believe that the, the earth is flat. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, seriously, I, I, I mean, there comes a point where you go, you know, people are either full of shit or they're not, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you agree because uh, we said the same thing. As soon as I heard that statement, I was like, well, David's in his late forties, and David's he's an, an actor, actor, and he's been doing so, this for fifteen years. So, so. It's insane. Well, now we know they they didn't hire Jim because he wasn't going to be on screen much, and they right. didn't want to pay. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I just, I find it crazy for them to say that you know you won't be seen that much. Really, the reason why they're justifying the low payment, considering you your character wasn't seen that much. Yeah. saw it no. anyway. So yeah. it just it it blows my mind. It blows yeah. my mind. Yeah, not not to like insult. Kiefer or and what he's been doing. I mean, he, I think he's been been doing a great job. He's it's just more of more of how Konami has been handling, Definitely. you know, replacing these actors and stuff, and just the <clears> way <throat> they've been treating the guys who've been with the series for so long. That's right. my main gripe, really. I mean, Kiefer, yeah. he's been doing great, but I mean, I just yeah, I feel for good. him. I've looked with him. He's lovely and he's a good good actor. But you know, God, that's a worth yeah. some loyalty, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. it doesn't make any sense either, Jim. I, and. We really got to move on because we're getting we're getting late here in the interview. But 
they're making a ton of money on this game. There's also uh, a, a thing called microtransactions. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it's after you pay for the game, you can then pay more to the game to speed certain aspects of it up, to skip certain uh, wait periods in the uh, in some of the like options that you have in the game. So not only are they getting, you know, I'm sure you can understand as a uh, you know as a, a producer yourself, they're not only getting the initial fund for the product, but then they have a supplement income throughout its lifespan. So I'm sure they could pay you whatever uh, whatever amount you ask, and I I I I'm just at a loss for words on why they they wouldn't. Yeah. So. So um, that's the last, I guess, I'll say of the subject. We really hope, um, or we really were hoping to see you back, but we can all understand uh, why you're not. So, um, Ronan, did you have a, your next question for us? Yeah, my, my next question actually kind of falls in line with what we were just talking about. But uh, have you, Jim, have you been following any of the events that happened with uh, Kojima and Konami, uh, Konami recently? With no, them, no, uh, I, I, oh boy. Oh man. Okay. That's so, doozy. <laughs> yeah. So to to summarize all the the dramatic events up, essentially Kojima is is fired from uh, Konami. Once the release of the Phantom Pain comes out in September, he's supposed to be gone from the company. Period. Um, yeah. With with yeah. With that said, uh, would you say that any of the you know the behavior of Konami for the way they've handled something, something like this, for example? Being similar to what you've experienced with them approaching you and telling you, giving you the excuse for why they were paying you less in the Phantom Pain if you were to reprise that, reprise that role for the game. I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question. Oh, oh, okay. So basically, like with the way they handled Kojima, uh, you yeah, know, them firing him from Konami. Uh, there's a long list of reasons of why they're doing that that I could probably spend hours talking about right now. But it's basically to sum things up. It's essentially them, you know, wanting to to move on to different things. And in my honest opinion, it's about them trying to spend less money. Um, but would you say that their behavior in this is kind of similar in line to what you've experienced with them approaching you for zero in the Phantom Pain, like them paying you uh -huh. less for the character not showing up more on the on the, yeah, on the I can't, game? Yeah, can't really comment on how they've interacted with anybody else, whether it be David or or, or anyone. Um, I can only comment on, on, on my experience, uh, mm -hmm. and, and it wouldn't be right for me to comment on, on how they've dealt with anyone else. If you guys see a pattern of behavior, <laughs> uh, you, you're, right. the, you're the objective eyes on it. I, I, yeah. I'm too subjective, so I can only comment on, on what my experience. Oh, that's fine. That's totally fine. Was it at least handled in a professional manner? Because yeah. we, we've seen some very unprofessional things from them recently, and we don't want to talk bad about a company or a studio. We right. really don't. We're not that kind of show. We're not here to bash anybody. But as yeah. you said, when you see a certain pattern of behavior, especially on a show like ours where we, we aim to bring the truth of things, um, were they at least respectful in, in dealing with you? Um, I, I, you'd probably have to talk to my agents. Okay, uh, okay, they were about the ones. That. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they did it. I literally, I'm just at the end of a phone when right. I'm saying, oh, this. Yeah, that's totally understandable. That's do you want to do this for this amount? And I'm saying yes or no. Okay, yeah, sure. awesome. Well, thank you for that. Absolutely. Uh, Young, your next question? So, my next question to you is as you were being uh, considered uh, to reprise the role of Zero, did you ever learn any, anything new about the character? I know you said uh, you learned he won't be, uh, or his, his physical appearance won't be in the game as much, um, but did you learn anything about the character at all? Uh, nothing no, too spoiler at all. I, I wouldn't have learned it till I'd gone into the studio. If, if I had, I'd be happy to give you a spoiler alert and tell what to <laughs> <laughs> No, that's all right. I see. Okay, well, uh, a lot of information actually comes from that one fact that you said that he won't be physically in the game as much right. uh, that already tells us quite a bit so uh yeah you know yeah if that's if that's indeed true <laughs> right uh, that's right. yeah that's a good point yeah, right yeah <clears throat> all right my last question for or sorry did you have another one young no that's it go ahead Okay, yeah. my last question for you, Jim, before I hand it over to these guys, we've got a couple of community questions uh, that we're going to run through just very quickly. Yeah. I know we're approaching the hour mark here on the interview. Um, but my last question for you is there's a there's a new trend going out. I'm not sure if you've heard of, of uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a new trend going out where games and game companies who want – um, you know, voice actors or specific games to be funded. Um, they go out and they're starting these new Kickstarter campaigns. For instance, there's a one called Bloodstained, um, which one of the stretch goals at $850,000, they were going to bring on David Hayter to voice the villain. Um, being that you're such an influential role in, in Metal Gear and uh, even just, we've talked a lot about Metal Gear, but you're really good in Lord of the Rings and some of the other games that you've voiced. Would you be interested in doing um, 
crowdfunded or fan funded projects like that. I think there's a lot of ones out there who might need a talent like yours, but they're not sure how the voice acting community would approach these. I think David Hayter is one of the first kind of higher tiered voice actors to kind of agree to do uh, an indie type game like this that's developed outside of a AAA studio. Um, is this something that you might be interested in doing in the future? It, I think, uh, as I said, a lot of the the studios out there that are trying to build these things, they're not sure if voice actors are into this kind of thing because it's not coming from a publisher. It's you know, like it's crowdfunded and fan funded and might not hit the goal, that kind of stuff. Uh, what are your thoughts and, and opinions on that? Absolutely. I, I, I think there's, you know, all bets are off now in the way things are put together. Uh, mm -hmm. And certainly in the television and film world, it's a, there's a whole new way of making everything. And I'm more than open to that. I actually like being in the ground floor on new things. Um, and and so yeah, I'm I'm 100% in favor of that. I think it's great, and um, I would be more than happy to do that as long again as if you know one's paid what a fair what yeah. you're supposed to be paid, and if it's a profit participation as well. If the thing goes on and you have uh, some kind of ownership or clause in there that yeah. gives you certain uh, in lieu of residuals or whatever, some profit participation. I think it's a fantastic way to do it. You know, yeah. I mean. God, I wish that had been structured on uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Right. I mean, that, that would have been quite a profit participation. I got to tell you, that's that's one of the, I think that's everybody's most favorite game in the series, too. So I, I totally agree. But I think, um, you know, to elaborate real quick before you continue, um, the, the, the game set up and it was like, at this goal, you'll get the game. But if we hit 850, that way we can pay David to come on to the, the, uh, the game. So I think that's perfect for what you're talking about. Then you're able to say, okay, for this amount of dialogue and this amount of work, it would cost this much for me to, to come into the game. And then the fans can decide if that's something that they want, which, um, you know, in, in the case of David, they, uh, I believe they hit 850,000 <laughs> yeah, in two that. hours. They wanted yeah. that bad. Two, two <laughs> hours, right. they, they, they raised that. So I think um, in, in your case, uh, if, if there was a game that required, a, you know, your, your, your type of voice work, um, the fans of your work in all of the Metal Gear games could go and, and, you know, show their opinion with their wallet as opposed to, you know, Konami who's like, well, you know, you're not – you know, in the game very much, so we're not going to pay you that much. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. The fans will decide, um, you know, that, yes. and uh, you've got a ton of fans, so I'm well, sure any, any goals out there. I think we'd reach $800 in at least two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Jim, you're something else, man, i got to tell you. It's been a, been a pleasure. That was my last question for you. I'm going to turn it over to these guys. They've got, like I said, a couple um, just smaller community questions for you to answer, and sure. they have the, uh, the lines of dialogue for the end of the show, so Y'all, take it away. Yep. So first up, I have. Uh, by the way, Ronan, do you have community questions that you would like to ask? Do you want to like alternate or something? Oh no. Oh, you're oh no. You're all, you're all done. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. Quick, so I have a question. Do yep. you have any reference before I read these lines later? Do you have any reference um, of, to, for, of me in the game so I can just? Yeah. Would hear you like uh, while he's doing that? Would you like us to send you a little like YouTube clip or something on Skype? Y yeah. Either that or just if you can play it. Here, live. I mean, I'll just listen in, and if you've got I it, time. I don't have a way for it to to pipe it in yeah, so that you that can in. hear it. Um, yeah. Let's see, uh, Ronan. If you'll work uh, behind the scenes, you want to grab him like a YouTube clip so you can just hear the the register. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to look for the some of the clips that might yeah, be sure. in line with what, what he's gonna yeah, say. Yeah, here, what you can do. Talk about it. No, if it's a hassle. Don't worry it's about. Not, it's really not. Here's what we'll do. It Ronan, really isn't. Find the clip, and then I'll just I'll play it through my headphone, and I'll just hold my headphone right here. <laughs> I don't know. All right, that works. Yeah. All right, sure. I'll, I'll be All a clip right. while Yong does these uh, these community questions. All right, sure. So first up, I have uh, Nick C from YouTube, and he asks, uh, "What is your favorite radio conversation that you can recall from MGS3?" Favorite radio conversation? Yeah. You mean like this? The the, the Kodak. Uh, you know, you you communicated with uh, Snake a lot via via radio via Kodak. And uh, you, you had a lot of exchanges, you know, one of them being like the one about lines. James Bond uh, and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Are there any ones that you recall in particular that you maybe are fond of? If not, you know, well, it's totally okay. My apologies to Nick. I really don't remember. Uh, <laughs> sure. You know, I, I've done so much stuff yeah. since then. Yeah. I, I, I honestly can't remember. I mean, I... Again, the fact that he liked James Bond was sort of like, oh, yeah, I vaguely remember that, you know. <laughs> so, right. I, I'm, I'm really... Sorry, apologies to, to yeah. is it Nick? I, yeah. I um, 
I wish I could could answer that for you, and, and maybe after I've done a bit of research and done my homework on YouTube, yeah. I'll, I'll be better prepared to answer that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, uh, like I know, as a person who does theater, I know that you know I do my work and then I just kind of forget the lines because I'm I'm done with yeah. that work. And yeah, it's just something that happens. So you know, a lot of people uh, completely understand that. Um, so next question is from uh, Otkusi um, from YouTube. What is it like knowing now that Zero became a villain after being such a big help to Snake during Snake Year? What 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 does that make you feel? I love hearing that. It gives us a great <laughs> twist. I love yeah. that. That's I'm awesome. all for good twists in uh, writing or, or as an actor. That's fun. I like that. Would you? Um, how would you voice an evil Zero? If uh, you know, would you add certain inflections that you wouldn't with uh, regular Zero? Or no, I think. Given that knowledge, if I was to do it again, you might have just slight, you know, hint here and there, and you. But but I think I don't think it would be much different. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah. Proper I think, British people are very evil. <laughs> but it's 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 more fun if it's not played evil. You yeah. know, I mean, um, to me that's that's more kind of psychotic. You know, I mean, sure. John Malkovich is, a, is an actor I know and and have, have uh, admired a long time and and. And that's John does so much humor, and when he's playing a good guy, a bad guy, whatever, uh, there's always that sort of twisted thing. And, and the nicer you are, in a funny way, the, the more yeah. scary it is. Right. I see. No, that's. Uh, I would pay to see that. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> um, next up, we have Nitrobot Blue from YouTube. Um, what do you think about uh, Kiefer Sutherland playing the role of Snake in uh, MGS5? And I guess it's it's more about what do you think about the actor and the performance that he can give? Because we already discussed uh, the whole Konami spiel. Yeah, well, he's terrific. I mean, he's. I did a show called Touch with him, and um, oh, did you really? Were you in that? Yeah, I did an episode of that show, and he oh. uh, he slammed me up against a wall and beat me up. Um, oh, well. uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he's great. He's terrific. But, Typical you know, Kiefer. He's, di he's different. So it's again, it's apples and oranges. It's some mm -hmm. people like apples, sure. some people like oranges. Uh, he's di different from David, and um, I'm sure it's it's like all the James Bonds. Some of them, are, some people like some better than others. You know. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, next up, we have uh, t uh, actually this question's already answered. Uh, Tiago from YouTube asks. Oh, wait, did you answer this? Did you ever meet Hideo Kojima? Did we ask this? No, we didn't. I didn't think so. No. no, somebody else asked me that recently. I believe so, yes, because, uh, but, but the, um, the actors are directed by a specific voice director, mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't think that was, was him. Yeah, that was uh, Chris, Chris Zim Zimmerman. That was, it was Chris, yeah. It was yeah. Chris, yeah. Yeah. pretty much all of them. Yeah. Um, and under what circumstances do you rem do you remember meeting uh, Hideo Kojima? Was he just kind of there it, it supervising? Would been, it would have been a face in the booth. Uh, oh, and yeah. I probably, uh, you know, at some point talks to him. Um, again, uh, it's hard for me to remember what I did last week. So 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I see. A bit of a stretch. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm sure I did. Or Sounds good. Um, yeah. Next up... Uh, we have Luis Alfonso. This is the last question that I have. Luis Alfonso from YouTube. Um, this is a good one because uh, this is something that I aspire to be as well. Any tips for aspiring voice actors? Uh, what What would you tell them in, in terms of the acting and also in terms of maybe breaking into the industry? Besides, so stay away from your jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, voice acting. <laughs> there are two kind of categories. There is, you know, if you're doing commercials and voiceovers for that. It's very different than actually playing a role. Um, and, uh, uh, the, they've got away from that kind of announcery thing now, and so it's right. much more natural. Right. Um, but I, I would say it's it's just a very concentrated, different form of acting. If you're a good when you when you're in a booth with with good actors, whether they're doing um, animation, video game, you'll see a lot of acting going on. You know, in physically they'll be, yeah. and and it, but it's very focused because your performance is not to an audience or to a camera; it's to a microphone. Right. So it's quite internal, but it's very and it's very focused. So it's just literally, um, it's the difference between spray painting with a with a wide, you know, a nozzle and and right. with a with a jet. Right. And and you have to really spray paint with a jet into that microphone. So that. That everything has to go into that funneled into that microphone. Wow. Sounds good. 
That's very that's insightful. That's I like um, I like it. So um, that I believe wraps up the community questions. Anybody have any other questions before we do this audio? We're good. Oh, okay. We're good. Um, so Jim, I'm gonna play uh, just a quick clip so you can catch the register um, of, hey, of zero. I, uh, something here came. Let me. Oops. Something came up here. Shall I look at it? Is yeah. It? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could you could definitely do it that way too. Absolutely. This, this makes one of the history books. World's first Halo challenge. This is actually a clip from the game. Yeah. Status okay? All green. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Okay. How does it how does it feel to hear your work after so long? <laughs> um, you know, it's one of those weird things where I, I sort of asked, was that me? Uh, <laughs> that was you. <laughs> uh, like I said, stellar performance. Everybody uh, in the Metal Gear franchise loved um, yeah. the performance. And there's that game. line, spread your wings and fly, God be with you. The one that we're going to do here that references that. But uh, anyway, that's... Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, do, so is that good enough uh, of a reference point for you? Yeah, I think this is going to be Major Zero 2015 as a person. Sounds good, you know? <laughs> so this is, what he would sound like, this is what he would sound like in The Phantom Pain if he was <laughs> Yeah, <here>. exactly. <laughs> this is how he'll sound in The Six game. Yeah, right. ooh, yeah, there we go. Confirmed, guys. <laughs> Exclusive new info. So, all right, uh, we got a few lines here. We, you got them on your uh, Skype message box. So uh, whenever you're ready, go, go right ahead. Uh, I think there are yeah, three separate ones and then one where I say something and then you say something, so... Go yeah, and I'll do I'll do three versions of each one as we do. Oh, uh, excellent! Generally, right. oh, yeah, Quentin did same, something same as Quentin Flynn. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. he did the same thing. This is one for the history books. Our first interview together. This is one for the history books. Our first interview together. This is one for the history books. Our first interview together. Spread your ears and listen. God be with you. Spread your ears and listen. God be with you. Spread your ears and listen. God be with you. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Yes, 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. For England, James? No. For me. For England, James? No. For me. For England, James? No. For me. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Oh, oh, man. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I got all my right. wallet. <laughs> <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> we all we, right we all yeah. we'll, we'll chip in a little bit. Maybe we'll yeah, get you right. more than Konami owes <laughs> you. Uh, that last one, I, I think I was channeling Alan Rickman on that last one. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I, I saw a little I, Alan Rickman in there. Oh, yeah. wow. I almost her, couldn't her, contain her. myself. That was amazing. That was That's so what great. I was saying, man. We definitely need to get you back into uh, the video game uh, market. I, I definitely think there's a bunch of companies out there that could definitely benefit from having a voice actor like you on board. Um, amazing yeah. interview, Jim. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Before I let you go, Yong, Ronan, is there anything else that you guys would like uh, to say to Jim? starting with you yo just um thank you for bringing zero to life i mean i think all the fans recognize you as the zero and it's un it's unfortunate how things uh turned out to be but uh we still have a fantastic point of reference with snake eater and you do a lot of fantastic work with in, in your films and tv and uh, it's it's awesome to know uh that you do broadway and theater it's always good to know a fellow theater person actor and uh, just fantastic job on everything that you do, and hope to. We hope uh, the very best for you for your future and in your future ventures. And I, I know you'll do great things because you're a, a fantastic actor. So just thank you for oh, everything. Thank yeah, thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, it. Sure thing. Ronan, I just want to say thank you, Jim, for joining us. Definitely appreciate it. Your your work in video games, whether it be in video games, movies, or TV, has always been fantastic. Um, especially considering that the new Batman game came out recently, and I think I would have preferred to, to hear you as Alfred's voice in that game instead. But that's a different <laughs> yes. topic of discussion. Also, your work on uh, also your work on Ben Ten as well. I didn't get a chance to talk about that a bit, but I definitely appreciate your work. Oh on yeah, that. that's all oh, right. That's a shame. Maybe yeah. next time. 
Yeah, maybe right. next time, but that's all right. I know time was kind of short on this one, so that's okay. But thank you again. I look forward to seeing your work in the future endeavors, whether that be video games or movies or TV for it, for that matter. So definitely enjoyed this interview, but be glad to have thank you back you so on in the future. Yes, and uh, from me, uh, Jim, and all of the uh, fans of the Codec, uh, we definitely appreciate you coming on. I look forward to seeing some of the movies that you talked about. Uh, I'm interested in seeing you as a serial killer uh, in your upcoming uh, in your upcoming <laughs> comedy. That one, um, that, one uh, that sounds amazing. Uh, thank you for all of your work all around the spectrum. Hopefully, after a few months have passed, maybe uh, six to eight months, we can have you back on the show and talk to you about some of the work that you've done. Um, I know you said you got another film upcoming that you can't talk about. Maybe you'll be able to talk about it then. Yeah, um, yeah. We would love to have you back on the show uh, as we do all of our other guests just to return and kind of update the fans on uh, you know what's going on with uh, with Jim. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the voice lines at the end. Quite, quite amazing. <laughs> I was definitely uh, very impressed with those. Um, anything you would like to say, Jim, before you leave? No, thank you. It's a pleasure doing this. Um, I, I would like to issue a, a, a very strong apology to, to the fans out there for my ignorance about the game. And that I, I'm actually going to remedy that because you've kind of inspired me to now take a look and do my homework. I'm um, so glad. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's tough because I, I, I do do a lot of things and I'm quite busy. So I don't often, as I said, sometimes I don't even see films I've been in or TV shows I've done. Yeah. Um, so it, it, this has kind of uh, inspired me to actually look at some clips and watch some of it and see what it was because it obviously meant a lot to a, a number of people and I feel I've been a little remiss in, um, in not knowing what I really did. I sure. think the fans will love to hear you say that. There's yeah. um, some some voice actors that we've interviewed uh, prior to you who are, you know, they're cut and dry. We understand that. They, they do the role and then that's it for them. But yeah. I'm, I'm super happy to hear that you're interested in going back to look. That's what means so much to us. Yeah. You are uh, Major Zero to all of the Metal Gear fans out there. Exactly. And you always will be. So the more that we can interact and talk to you about that kind of stuff and you be yeah. on yeah. the same knowledge you know, base as us would be amazing. So yeah. uh, we as uh, the, the team here at the Kodak will definitely send you some clips and, and some yeah. links of right. the important things that you should watch. Yeah, if you have any uh, questions about the character, you know, let yeah. us know because yeah, we, we know <laughs> everything there is to know about this character. So um, yeah, let's, oh, yeah. let's launch a new game. Yeah, yeah let's launch <laughs> Kickstarter, guys. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, thank you again, Jim, so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great Thanks, day, well. sir. Yeah, and you. Bye now. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up our interview with Jim Piddock. What an amazing, what a Fantastic. great interview. That was Fantastic. a great, yeah, that was great interview. That, that was, was um, one of the first interviews that, uh, oh, the cameras are going to mess up here just so everybody knows. Just bear with us while we fix that because um, we're going to get a little post show today. We haven't done a post show in a while, so we'll do one today. Sure. Um, the uh, I think with this particular interview, we got a lot more from somebody who wasn't very familiar with the game as we've done with anybody else that yeah. wasn't familiar with their game, if that makes <laughs> any kind of sense. And, dude, I'm um, not going to lie. I'm pretty happy about the way he was uh, inspired uh, to look into that yes, stuff. Yes, I mean, I I, that's, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, that really... It, the feels. I'm like, oh my god. We just, <laughs> yeah, I think that's you know. awesome because he he's done interviews before on Metal Gear, and yeah. I'm glad this is the show where you know he's like, all right, I need to go look. That means yeah. we're doing our job yeah. as far as uh, hosting. Um, and, you know, I with, think maybe if he was inspired before, uh, he would have maybe uh, been a little yeah. had a little more consideration for maybe reprising the role, even if he wasn't getting paid what he should have, you know, because of the fans and whatever. I guess he just didn't know what a big install base Metal Gear uh, has uh, as a series. And uh, I think uh, it's good at least that he knows now and, and, you know, we can, you know, we'll definitely help him out in in getting him caught up. But it's fantastic that he's... I'm glad we have that, like, we have a role to teach a voice actor of a (laughs) game that we all love about yeah. his own character. Who I else could say I think that? Seeing his reaction to finding out, you know, the the he was bad. impact that Zero yeah. has oh. on the series was kind of like, whoa. Yeah, he, he was surprised. Yeah, yeah he, he was super surprised about that. I'm like, wait, he didn't know about that ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, that blew my mind for that too. Yeah, I mean, he knew it made a lot of money, but that doesn't necessarily translate to a character having a big install base, a big fan exactly. base. And yeah. I think he just found out, like, holy <laughs> crap, but this is a right. this character is kind of a big deal. And that's yeah. great. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get caught up, and you know, we'll be inspired. Or yeah, I think that's awesome. I'm, I'm, 
I'm super happy to hear that. But outside of Metal Gear, which, you know, our show's themed around, but outside of Metal Gear as yeah. an interview show, we got some good insight. We've got a couple of films coming up that sound absolutely hilarious uh, <laughs> yeah. and incredible. Um, you know, we, we had some insight on some TV shows that I didn't even know he was in. I didn't know he had worked with Kiefer before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's got an upcoming movie. So I, I'm always, you know, interested to see what they do outside of, uh, of the, the Metal Gear because I know them in Metal Gear. So I want to go out and see, like, does he have a little zero in, you know, in this performance or, you know, does it slip by in here? But uh, I got to say, my favorite part was the ending. You guys, um, <laughs> you, you, he when we showed him the the, the lines for the um, uh, the register, it. yeah, yeah he, he did. nailed it. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Killed, and, he killed and, it. And because he sounded a little older, I, I thought it worked really well where you yeah. kind of <laughs> get a glimpse of what he would have kind of sounded like uh, in, in yeah. Phantom Pain or what have you. So it was, yeah. especially that final line where he goes, no. For me, you know, I don't know. There, yeah, that was great. There was that <laughs> darkness there, you know. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think maybe we should have asked um, David to give us his impression of what he would have been like in uh, as Big Boss in in Metal Gear. I'm sure it would have been kind of similar, but uh, gruffer than still, Peace Walker. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's just go. something you know that I didn't think about until you know until you just brought it up. So yeah, what a uh, what a great what a great guy. Um, awesome, uh, awesome interview. Uh, I think. Um, I think with as as far as Jim goes, uh, you know, like like he said, uh, he's definitely interested in getting back into uh, some video game work. So hopefully, um, you know, we're at that point now where game studios and, and things like that are actually seeing the content that we produce, and uh, I'm excited to see, you know, maybe what pops up. Who knows? You you never know. In a couple months, we could see a Kickstarter for a game with Jim Piddock in it. Who knows? Maybe. Um, I, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, to to see uh, where that's going. So. Um, to close up, guys, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, some events going on with the codec. We have uh, Debbie May West confirmed uh, for the 31st. That is Meryl, for anybody who's uh, lacking in the knowledge department. I don't know how you don't know this amazing lady. She's in a ton of uh, different things, not just Metal Gear, but she's in uh, different anime, animated series and uh, different other games. Um, so I'm excited to, uh, to get to talk to her. Uh, what do you guys, what's your big questions for Meryl? You guys oh gotta... man! Ooh, you know I, gotta... I haven't why gotten Johnny? there yet. Why Johnny? Yeah, why Johnny? Damn it! <laughs> What's wrong with Snake? Yeah, I'll take old Jesus. Snake over Johnny any day. Seriously. Ooh, I mean, he's, I he's, he looks old. pretty good for a guy if who has Fox the suit on. As long as he keeps the the, the muscle suit on, right? He yeah, the muscle octo, suit. Yeah. Octo. He yeah, looks that bad without it. Yeah, even without it, he looks pretty yeah. okay for a guy who's decrepit. I mean, <laughs> not bad at all. I mean, right. You know, I'm just he's a little saying, pale, but you know, of, uh, uh, from a girl's perspective, from and Meryl's uh, position, he definitely would have to keep the octo suit on and just make, like transform <laughs> it into like a you know a <laughs> naked <I'm> being... <laughs> naked octo camo. <laughs> naked <laughs> yeah. octo camo. There we go, guys. Uh, keep the young snake mask on, please. Right. So <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah we we, go. we've we've got Debbie uh, Debbie May West confirmed. I'm still working out a date with uh, with Heather Haley. Is that how you pronounce her last name? I, I feel like so, it's Heather not, Haley. but it, how else would not, you? Heather uh, it looked like Holly. Holly? Heather? Holly? No, Holly? I think it's Heather. Holly, Holly with an A? I don't know. I don't know. We'll research. Yeah, we'll, we'll get when it. When I think of the when I think of the word Haley, I think of H A L E Y, not H A L L whatever. Spelled. <laughs> but yeah, we're still working it out with her. She's a she's a, a busy lady. So, um, but she is she's in, interested. She's already tweeted at me like two or three times and said, uh, "Just give me a couple days and I'll DM you the the info." Um, so we've got two great female <laughs> um, guests uh, coming on um, fairly soon. We've also got um, uh, Guy Chi Chi Chi. I hope I pronounced that right. Guy that's Chi Chi. <laughs> if you say that name wrong, he's going to be really upset. Uh, James uh, James Sutherland from uh, Silent Hill. Oh my! To, <clears throat> Wait, is it Sutherland? Nice. Is, is yeah. that? Oh, J, it's, yeah, it's some James something, right? Sub, is Sutherland? it Sunder or something? Sunder. I think it might be Sunder. Sutherland. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, it's, it's Su Sunderthal Sunder. or something. I don't remember. Sun Sunderthal. Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's from uh, that's from your Skyrim. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's Sutherland. <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure it's it, it's it's there though. But yeah, he, looking it up for us. So yeah, guy, we'll, guy, guy, yeah it's 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 James Sunderland. S uh, okay, Sunderland. Sunderland. There we go. Sunderland. Yeah. So we've got James <laughs> Sunderland from Silent Hill, two, <clears throat> aka Guy Chi Chi. I'm, I'm C A C I H I. I'm assuming that's what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got him coming on. And the unique thing here is, I don't know if you guys are seeing the theme, but. 
got another Konami guy coming in here to talk to us. Um, from what I understand, and this is going to be the controversial part of this show, which obviously, as you if you watch our show, we're all about some controversy around this bitch. Uh, <laughs> Troy Baker blames him for the poor remake of uh, Silent Hill, um, the remaster. And no. yes, and so I'm I'm and he blames Konami. And so I'm oh, wow. curious. It's a chain. It's a domino effect. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm curious on what's going on. I don't know if maybe when his original recordings were just hard to dub. And tr- I didn't even know Troy Baker was in it. Uh, it is in, was in Silent Hill. I had no idea. Really? Uh, but appa- yeah. Oh, wow. Did you know? Yeah, I, I didn't know. <laughs> Who does, he no play? does he play? Does he play James in the remaster? I don't think he does. Truth be told. It's, it's, I haven't really looked too much into the information about the remaster. Mm-hmm. To well, find out t- what that is, t- but yeah. T- tell me what role he plays in there while, yeah. while we do this post show. But uh, I- I'm curious to figure out what the whole debacle is. I know the remaster was terrible. I heard <laughs> the remaster was absolutely horrendous as far as the voices go. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how involved he is in it anymore. I know he's got some cool um, educational games that uh, he wants to come on and talk about that kind of blend. Um, traditional game gaming into a, I guess, a learning experience, which is unique. Uh, I remember back in the day playing those uh, point and click uh, learning games uh, all over the computer. So I'm hoping maybe he's got a kind of fresh new version where now, like, while I'm playing Call of Duty, I'm learning math or something. <laughs> all right, so Troy Troy has uh, quite a few roles in the remaster. Uh, he's got uh, James Sunderland. Okay. And uh, he does a couple of goth protagonists and uh, Derek Copeland? what I'm seeing at least on, at least on this wiki page yeah when you can play like five characters in the game yeah <laughs> yeah he's, he's got quite a few it's, uh, that's Troy, ba- Troy Baker for you yeah, yeah. so apparently there's <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say bad blood but apparently there's some friction in between those those characters so I'm, I'm curious to see what's going on with that and then we also the last kind of announcement is uh, we we are working with uh, Kimberly Brooks to come on the show who is an uh, amazing voice actress Oh my gosh! I can't wait to to ask her how she enjoyed me as Commander Shepard because that's my love interest. So she. <laughs> oh boy! Here we go. Yeah, here maybe, we uh, go. Uh, you have to tell her far, we'll bang, okay? You have yeah, to tell we'll her. bang. We'll bang, okay? Uh, maybe <laughs> we can get that. Mark Muir to come on for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise <laughs> guest, everybody! That. Mark yeah. Muir, and she just goes, "We'll just bang, okay?" Line. And Skype we'll call. That's yeah, <laughs> I think that would be absolutely uh, awesome to, to 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 reunite those two characters because no matter what, I don't know if anybody else has this problem, but no matter how often I replay the the Mass Effect series, which I do quite often, it's one of those games. Like I said, Metal Gear, Mass Effect, like right under each other. Um, it uh, no matter what I do, I can't ever save Caden. Like, <laughs> just no way. I can't Fuck force myself. Yeah, <laughs> and Fuck it's such a guy. shame yeah. because because uh, the the voice actor is great, and I'm hoping yeah. to get him on Ra- Raphael Sabarich. I can't pronounce his name. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're we're uh, I'm gonna have Kimberly on here. But not only does she do, do Mass Effect, but she was in Bioshock Infinite as um, don't remember her name, but she was like a cowboy yeah, girl. Yeah, I know who you're talking. Um, about. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, she was the, the cowboy, and then she was also in, uh, I believe, a Star Wars game uh, as well. So um, quite a few uh, awesome upcoming voice actors for our show, but we also have some gaming companies. We've got H1Z1 uh, going to come on and talk to us about their game. Um, it's a big uh, zombie survival game with uh, some interesting um, controversy going on within it right now, so I'm excited to talk to Daybreak uh, Studios about um, how they're kind of cleaning up the mess of uh, Sony Online. And um, uh, we've got a couple other games uh, lined up to come on and talk to the uh, talk on the show about their upcoming games, as well as some other uh, some other interesting characters uh, coming on. So we've got quite a lineup for you guys. Make sure you stay tuned on the codec um, for all that kind of coming up stuff. Uh, that's it from me, uh, Yong. When is our trailer analysis? It's been <laughs> it's been like it's been almost a week. Uh, yeah, it's almost, uh, the script is almost done. It's going to be, uh, it's looking like it's going to be an hour and a half long. So Ooh, that's that, why it's taking that long. I can uh, the thing that. is, I, I, I like to play <laughs> devil's advocate on, on certain things. You know, I don't just yes. want to say it's this, you know, I want to say, okay, maybe it's this and here's why, and maybe it's this and here's why. So right. I like to present two sides of things. 
And so, but this trailer, I mean, it's uh, the amount of shit in it is. If crazy. there's a gray fox theory in there, I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm so um, kidding. I'm watch anything that you put out, man. Um, well, I mean, I, I do think gray fox is gonna be in it. I just don't think it's Big Boss. Um, but right. Uh, right. I think yeah. I do mention gray fox uh, once or twice in there. But uh, it's it's gonna it's coming. It's the script is almost done. It's at like 21 pages long right now. It's a whole fucking. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but can you give us a teaser of something? Give us a, give us a teaser of a theory that you're that you're talking about. Don't don't go in depth and talk about it. Just give us a, give us a little nibble about something in there that you've seen that maybe we haven't already heard of. Is that um, possible? Damn, I don't remember though. It's just. Uh... I mean, I already talked a bit about how I think the AI pod is the mammal pod. Right. Uh, and uh, what else? Uh, I mean, I, I have a lot in there about the infection that I think is okay. a huge part of the game. Yeah, because, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that Kaz, Code Talker, and the Skulls, um, the Skulls, I think they come from some kind of infection. And I think that infection somehow got into Kaz and... Code Talker because they all have that same shade of eye. Black, black, glossy. And there's that one African man who has the weird skin shit right. on there, and he right. has the same eyes. And uh, I think the infection yeah. is part of the process. And I also right. think the infection has a lot to do with Skullface's plan to free the world by ridding of it from from its language. Yada yada yada. Okay. I'll elaborate more. There we. On that's the perfect. That's yeah. all. That's all we needed. That's a that's a great uh, a great thing to talk about. I'm excited to to Absolutely. see what you have. Uh, in the full release um, of, of the video. So uh, what are you saying for that? Another week or less? No, it's, it's definitely less than... I think I should be done with the, with the script today, uh, with the rough draft, and I should be able to edit it and finish it today. So the script will be done today. Tomorrow I'll probably record the audio and start on video editing. By Wednesday, maybe? Um, let's see. Today is what? Today Friday. Is Friday. Oh, yeah, by Wednesday it should be done. Absolutely. Yay! I'm excited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Uh, Young Yes yeah, got some cool stuff coming out for yeah. you. What else? Uh, you have anything else that you wanted to talk about before we get out of here? Um, gee, what else is new around? Uh, I don't know. I've just been so focused on the analysis that I haven't you, really. You got Fallout 4 news coming out? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I did one uh, not too long ago. Uh, they right. actually confirmed that uh, it starts in 2075. And so that means it's two years before the Great War. So I guess you'll right. fast forward through two years of uh, your protagonist's life. They confirm that it takes place um, mostly after Fallout 3. So I, I, I'm assuming that means, you know, the pre-war stuff, that's where the other part of the most... Right. You said, didn't you say they said that you would spend enough time in yeah. there to get you acquainted with... Which the is kind of cool. Yeah. So yeah, I think two years makes cool. sense where, you, you know, spending two years in that era, in that prologue, I think that okay. should be enough to get acquainted yeah. with um, the, the pre-war world. And then, yeah. Got any thoughts on what, we, what we're going to be doing? Is it going to, you think it's going to be kind of similar to maybe like the intro to Fallout 3? We're just kind of walking around doing some like various point and click tasks? That, that's a good question. I, have, I don't think we'll be shooting anything, but yeah. uh, I think it's going to be more of a maybe point and click adventure kind of thing where you kind explore. Of take you around town just and interact right. with other people and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. like where you yeah. kind of get to uh, learn the lore a bit and uh just uh i guess flesh out who the who the protagonist is before right. shit it's right. the man because you said be i think you also said that they said that it's gonna make you feel like you've lost something yeah like so i don't know if maybe you get to like build maybe you get to start like i like Doing the building mechanics of your like, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, the house building. Yeah, the house. Maybe you get to like place furniture and like kind of set up your own little dream house, <laughs> and then it gets blown up. That's an interesting theory. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna be the thing until later because yeah. I mean, you know, the world isn't destroyed, so there's nothing to repair. I guess that's exactly. But maybe they're like an addition to your house. You know, up, upgrade. Maybe, yeah, I'm, get all Sims on and yeah, Fallout. Maybe <laughs> exactly. You know, they go zoom zoom. You know, and then. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantastic if they did that. That is, but, that uh, is retro Sims right retro, there. That yeah. is retro. Yeah, retro, <laughs> retro Sims. Retro Sims. <laughs> but I think it's mostly going to be fleshing out story, the uh, the pre war yeah. stuff. Um, nothing actiony, and that I'm totally fine with that. I would love I, to. Yeah, I think so too. Because yeah. we miss that in a lot of games. You yeah. know, well, all the games. You don't rarely get to see. You know, I see all these burnt out cars and all these buildings, and I'm like, what was that? 
Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I would have liked to go there. Yeah, and I think uh, what's I, I think what he meant by well, you'll feel like you lost everything is that we'll get a big tour around this you know pre-war city, and then we'll okay. come back to the you know to the same city two hundred years later and see the same landmarks that we maybe yeah. got a glimpse of in the pre-war stuff, and we'll see it just completely ravaged. And you know maybe that's what he was saying okay. there, where yeah. uh, we'll see things and we'll we'll see things you know pre-war and then post-war, and it'll look like shit. Uh, in post-war <laughs> and you'll be like damn well that's awkward so yeah. all right cool well uh yeah i'm glad you've got some other stuff in the pipe and i'm uh, i'm happy to see uh your trailer analysis when it comes out man i'm, ex I'm excited um anything else that's it for me all right ronan what do you got going on man you got uh, ninja stars not included this weekend yes we do we got another one coming up this weekend another episode hopefully we got to catch up on a lot of things since we didn't have an episode last week um I, I gotten down to editing the video version of the most recent episode. I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know what? I got too much going on. This is not going to come out on time right now. I got I got too, too many other things to focus on. You need on to right make now. them VODs on your channel. Uh, uh, you know the quality of the VODs. Like you're, you're stuck with stream quality because they archive what you put out on the stream. Right. And I prefer to have it the quality okay. that I'd like to see it on I'm YouTube. I'm working which is why real hard on getting you transcoding, man. I'm, I, I, I'm pestering them day in and day night. <laughs> I think uh, Hawkeye's actually here in the chat with us. Yeah, he so, is. So Hawkeye, please get my man some <laughs> transcoding. Please. He's a host of the Kodak. He, he, he deserves a little bit of transcoding. Just a little bit. Oh, just, just a little bit. Just, yeah, just, just a little, little bit. Oh, just, just a little bit of transcoding. It's like a, a give, drop of transcoding, give, you know. Give him, tra give him transcoding on Sundays, okay? <laughs> on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, write a script and transcoding on Between Sundays. Between 1 and 1.30 p.m. Because, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's what we got to do the podcast. We know, all those times. Yeah, we know transcoding is expensive, but uh, Ronan's got a great show, and he, he deserves it. So, uh, yeah, make sure you guys check out Ninja Stars Not Included. It's this uh, Sunday at um, www hitbox.tv slash corrupt Ronan. He loves Who when I say Who uses www anymore? Is that a thing? Yeah, why y'all y'all are... Uh, I, I try to tell him that. He doesn't listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's a, it's uh, what a waste else? of words <laughs> and space. <laughs> hey, look, the World Wide Web, man. If you don't put that in, you might go somewhere else. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, what else you got going on, Ronan? Yeah, we, we're trying to get a lot of stuff posted up on the website. I'm probably going to restructure the entire website when I get a chance to. I know uh, one of my co-hosts, Vancey, she just put up her first article, which she's calling Vancey's Munchies, which is where <laughs> she goes <laughs> She goes and talks it's about different... Box, uh, right? Yeah, it, essentially, well, not necessarily. It's like she, oh. Her and her husband, Rio, because her husband is Japanese, he, okay. he has a direct line of getting products from Japan and having them shipped over to them. <laughs> so that's kind of what they do, and uh, Vancey is... She'll get certain treats and she'll review them and talk about them as an That's article fun. on the website. So we're working this on that. It's on your website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah that's that's, oh, I didn't that's even we're working on a lot of things with that so far. So that's just the the first step in a lot of uh, awesome plans that we have for that. Okay. Well, I'm excited to see that, man, because I, I like that. So as soon as I heard about uh, Tokyo Treat Box on your um, on your stream, I, I went and looked at it and I was like, man, I. I want that. <laughs> I do too. That I looks cool. Too. I like those sodas that you has the little marble in the top, yes. and you push it down, and you can drink. It's, like, it's frustrating though, because like it's like a it's like a artificial limiter where if you try to throw it back, right. it just stops you from drinking out of it. It's the worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love those. Yeah, so that, that that's going to be fun. I, I'm excited to see that. Guys, make sure you check out um, Ronan's everything that he's got going on with Ninja Stars Not Included. It's definitely going to be cool. Uh, you got anything else going on? Uh, no, that's it for now. i got to start to stream after this uh, show, so I guess I'll be working right. on it pretty soon. We'll but, wrap uh, it up here in just a second. Yeah, so well, I'm going to let you get into it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i send myself out on this one then. <clears throat> <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us in a lot of the interviews that we've done so far, and hopefully you guys really enjoyed this. And thank you once again to Jim for joining us. He definitely uh, he sold himself short on the interview before we got to it, saying that he'll, he'd only be there for like two <laughs> minutes. And he was all, well over an hour worth yeah, yeah. of information that he gave us, and that was fantastic. But uh, once again, shout-outs to the Corrupt Assassins. They've definitely been motivating me, motivating me to keep going and doing these uh, interviews as well. And especially a good, uh, big shout-out to Penguin Jutsu, who's uh, been by my side the entire time, uh, yeah. definitely cheering me on throughout the entire process of doing these. So I definitely appreciate that, guys. But uh, <clears throat> until next time, you guys, keep it classy, keep it sassy. 
And I'll see you all next time. I love Thanks the new, watching. new exit. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I love it. Um, last thing for me, guys, a uh, couple small little bits of information. Uh, the Codec now has a Twitter, which myself and Ronan and Yong all have access to. So if you would like to tweet us uh, information about upcoming interviews that you would like to see or you have comments about interviews or anything like that, uh, send them on over to at the underscore Codec. Um, we are on Twitter, and we, like I said, all of us um, access that account, so um, you can talk to any, any one of us there. Um, somebody will respond to you. There's three of us, uh, like I said, so somebody will say something to you if you, uh, if you tweet at us with suggestions or um, sure. comments for upcoming guests. Um, other than that, uh, we'd like to quickly um, – well, I'm going to hold off on that real quick. Uh, I, I'd like to address one thing before we leave. I told you guys I was going to address it. Uh, there was some some uh, stuff that I talked about earlier during the show, uh, at the, the pre-show. I'm just going to talk briefly about it right now. I just want to say up front, um, I'm not upset with anybody. I know there was uh, some, some beef, quote-unquote, that was uh, being said earlier. I just want to put out there, I'm not upset. I understand what the guy is saying. The guy asked to come on our show. Um, I'm, I'm, we're all very busy lining up. We've got guests planned for the next three months, uh, almost. And so we're very, very busy. So if I don't respond to you on Twitter immediately, it's not because, uh, I don't want to, I'm, I'll be the first person to message you back directly and have a conversation with you. I think anybody from the Metal Gear Solid fan clubs know, uh, that I'm, I'm very sociable. Uh, so by no means that I mean to ignore anybody, um, but, uh, you know, we're not stealing anybody's credibility or anybody's work. We've been doing this for, for four months now. Um, we've had Jim Pinnock lined up for uh, quite a while. Um, we just recently got in contact with him, and uh, we've got more guests uh, coming up that uh, may intersect with this so said person's uh, interview schedule. We do not have a monopoly on, uh, on interview guests. When guests come on and, uh, and do an interview with us, this is not their last interview, and right. this is That's not their, their only. Choice. Right, this is right. not their only interview show. Um, the only thing that I was upset about, and like I've said many times throughout the show, I'm very upfront and I'm going to be honest with everybody, whether it's brutally honest or not. Uh, that's just how I am. Um, I've been doing this a long time, but I didn't steal anybody's show. In fact, I, I kind of felt uh, the reverse um, on this. So by no means was I meaning to step on anybody's toes. This is what I do. I interview people. I've been interviewing people. Before I brought Yong Ya yeah, and Corrupt Ronan on here, I've done uh, countless interviews with countless game studios. Um, so this is my thing. This is what I do. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to clear that up. I'm not upset or mad at anybody. There's no beef. I don't. I'm not a beefy kind of guy. I'm uh, like I said. I'm upfront, and I'm just gonna say it is what it is. Uh, there's no animosity. I'd, I'd still like to have this guy on the show. If he's got a Metal Gear show, we could talk Metal Gear one show. If we don't have a guest lined up, I don't. I don't care. Um, but, uh, yeah, by no means am I stealing anything from anybody. I'm a, I'm an original kind of guy. So, uh, with that out of the way, um, I would like to extend the, uh, the mic to my two co-hosts, just to be fair. If you guys don't have anything to say or no comment, that's fine. Um, but I'm not going to spiel out and not let you guys say anything. So, Ronan, did you have anything to say on this particular subject? Because it's not, before you go, it's not just me. This is our show. You know right, I mean? right. And even on episodes where you guys aren't here, if you can't make it, like there was a couple interviews where uh, Yong couldn't make it. There was a couple interviews where Ronan couldn't make it. They're still part of the show. Their, exactly. their Twitter handles are <laughs> always up there. They're always in the credits in the, in the YouTube videos. And so when somebody says something like this about our show, I think it's important that we don't necessarily have a beef. Like I said, I don't have a beef with anybody, but I think it's important that we at least address it. So yeah, sure. did you have anything to say, Ronan, on, on this? Yeah, I mean, because... It, these exact same people, they reached out to me on Twitter about this ahead of time, too. And I didn't get a chance to get back to responding to, them, responding to them about the issue because, I mean, contrary to belief, this is not the only show I do. I mean, I, yeah. I run a stream on Hitbox. I do a podcast outside of that. I have my own YouTube channel. I do a lot of things outside of that. So yeah. if I don't respond to you on Twitter for a question that you have, it's not because I don't like you. It's not because I don't have a, an issue with you. I just might be busy. Yeah. So... And let's uh, be honest, it's easy to lose a tweet. Like it, Exactly. When you got a flood of tweets coming through all the time, it's easy to lose that tweet. So it's not an issue of, you know, we intended to steal anything because that's not what we did. That's not what we did at all. We, we, like you said, we have a, a backlog, a long list of people that we have lined up for interviews from this point on and in the near future. <clears throat> so uh, that, that's, if it happens to intersect, it happens to intersect. But like you said, yeah. we don't have a monopoly on these interviews at all whatsoever. If you want to interview somebody that we've interviewed, go for it. We're not going to say you can't. Or if you want to interview somebody that we haven't, go for it. We're not going to say you can't. Yeah. 
But I think when you say that we're stealing your interviews because you interviewed somebody before we did, is this, I think that's a bit ridiculous, yeah. uh, honestly. And especially when um, this, like I said, I'm not going to name drop anybody, but this so said person just interviewed David Hayter, which we've already interviewed twice, uh, and then one with Quentin Flynn. So, right. like, uh oh. Uh, yeah, so that's that was my point, Yong. I know, uh, I know you you had t- uh, something you wanted to say about it. So, um, I mean, it's really not a big deal for me. Just yeah. you know, before you claim anything about stealing, look at yourself in the mirror, and maybe uh, you'll find out that uh, you'll see something there, an irony behind uh, those words. But I, I I, whatever, you know, s- yeah. claim whatever you want. I don't care. We're gonna keep doing our thing, and it's a great thing, and people love it. That's that. Yep. That's exactly how I feel about it. Do do your thing. We're going to keep doing ours. And uh, like I said, no animosity between anybody here. It's just, um, you know, uh, we, we were all just kind of a little off put by the comment because we were, I think we're a pretty original uh, show. I think we're the first, uh, one of the first shows, a podcast to do a three host thing. And I think we're one of the first to do gaming uh, voice actor interviews specifically in like a uh you know, a timeline order. I, don't, I haven't seen a show like this anywhere else. Uh, I've seen individual interviews between voice actors and stuff everywhere, but nothing, um, you know, on a consistent basis like this. So uh, I agree with you 100%, Young. I think our show's fairly original, and I'm excited for our future. We have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, the last announcement that I want to make before we give it to Young to do his, um, his, uh, his outro is we have a... Um, we have an event coming up called uh, Orlando IX, which is a actual live gaming event um, where I'm attempting to host the codec from. Uh, so if you guys would be so kind and to support us um, with that endeavor, uh, check out um, the codex Twitter in the upcoming weeks. Uh, check out Orlando IX if you're in the Florida area and you'd like to maybe see the codec live. Um, I don't know if we're going to have everybody live i don't know if, if if the times will permit for ronan and yong to come down to orlando um and, and do this particular show but if not they'll definitely be joining me via skype it will just be a live setting with our with our guests and uh we've got some fun stuff planned for the upcoming future of the codec um but like i said give me a, a week or two to kind of iron out the details for that just know that um, we are evolving the show we're definitely doing different things and i'm excited uh for everything that we have coming up um, Yong, well, it's time to go. Yep, it's that time of the day. It's been uh, a fantastic interview, as always, and uh, awesome job to you too, and thank you to the audience for tuning in. Uh, I, I had a blast, and just expect more awesome content You know, from all three of us individually and together. Uh, the future is bright. So thank you for tuning in, folks, and I'll see you guys next time. Yong out. And some people are asking me to say, Rocket the Punch! So I'll say that. <laughs> I was going to ask you to say that because I, I kept saying it in the chat. How can, so. I, how can I get this in the show now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, oh. Good stuff. I love Bye, guys. <laughs> from, from, from Team Rocket Punch. Team Rocket. <laughs> See you guys next time on the uh. next episode of the Codec. <laughs>